Hello everyone, Onyx Cobra here. A while back I made a video showing some FPV modifications that I made to one of these Faye 6x6 trucks. Using a FlySky transmitter and receiver I was able to use um, the extra channels to give myself some functionality, you know, a couple cameras and the ability to switch through, um, you know, shift the transmission and things like that. I thought it would be helpful to make another video showing how I did this um, because these techniques will go across the board if you want to do a WPL or um, any of these larger vehicles. Um, this this 12 scale has the exact same functionality as this uh, 16 scale. If I powered that up, I could do all of the same thing, you know, with the driver and all that. So, so I just wanted to show how I set that up. Um, one of the other things is that this gives you a lot of versatility with your models. I've got um, this type of transmitter in these two, but I also put these in my, this is a Panzer. I've also got one in there as well as um, in my crawlers. I got my Gen 8 here and the common denominator is going to be um, my flash sky receiver. Um, with that, like I said, I just replaced the, the, uh, the old one and I'm able to put my internal winch on there. I got my servo winch and I don't have to use any of those weird little keychain controls as well as I can put any number of lights. If I wanted to run a trailer, if I wanted to put a turret, missile launcher, anything, you're only limited by the amount of challenge you have and your imagination. Um, I, now in an application like this. Um, you may be thinking like it's on the running board. It's going to get completely ruined Nope, they make uh, military spec corrosion X if you code it with that you are good to go but we're going to keep it focused and look at the applications for using these um, in these um, 16 scale models and other things like that. Oh one other thing you can also use these to control uh, micro controllers such as Arduinos. Um, you could use a couple of your channels on your receiver to remote, you know, activate um, programs and different codes that you have stored in one of these. You could put one of these in any of your models and have it doing all kinds of stuff. So the versatility in using these is, is unmatched. So we're going to get into uh, making your electronic infrastructure so that you can combine all of whatever components that you want um, in your model. Let's get started. Okay, so we have the Mark II on the bench and uh, it's pasta night, we're serving wire spaghetti. Rather than delve into that, we're gonna look here because I've got the components laid out. Okay, I'm gonna go around the mat and call out uh, the components in their respective channels. You may use just about anything in your build. Um, we're gonna be working with a 10 channel receiver, so I've got up to 10 channels to play around with, and these are just items that I thought might be fun to use. Okay, so starting with the usual suspect, on channel one, we're gonna have the steering servo. Um, on channel two, you've got the usual uh, ESC that is gonna run uh, our main drive motor. We're going to be using a two-speed motor, so the servo to uh, switch speeds is going to be operated by channel three. On channel four, we're going to have a 360-degree servo with a camera attached to it on the rear of the truck, so we're going to run that on channel four. On channel five, we're going to have a secondary ESC that is going to control um, our winch. On channel six, we're going to be using our three camera switcher. We're going to have a, a FPV system of three cameras, and this component is going to allow us to switch between the three views and then send the output signal to our transmitter. On channel seven, we're going to have uh, the servo with our main camera attached that's going to be in the driver's seat. So we're going to have that controlled um, on channel seven. On channel 8, we're going to have um, our headlights and taillights. We're going to have a switch powered directly from the receiver that's going to turn our LEDs off and on. On channel 9, we have another simple LED switch, but it's the type that's going to flash them. So we've got interior lights and our exterior dome light that's going to flash um, via the switch on channel 9. 
And then finally on channel 10, we're going to have a relay switch that is going to turn our variable watt transmitter off and on because you may or may not want to transmit all the time. So just thought it might be cool to have a way to turn that off. So that's going to be uh, channel 10. Now we have a lot of components here. Um, the receiver is fully capable, of course, supplying power to servos and um, LEDs and things of that nature. But of course, you don't want to attempt to power a, a transmitter. It would eat your battery up and some of the other accessories. So we're going to want to run that from a secondary power source. So the question is, you can't just twist all the wires together. And how do you bring all of these components together in any meaningful way? The answer is simple. Ta-da! Okay, ladies and gents, there it is, the star of our show, and the beginning point for me anyway, of uh, the buck converter. First, I want to mention that um, I'm not paid by anyone to say anything, which might be unfortunate. But um, any and all of the items are just things that I've gotten off of Amazon. But this guy does wonders. Uh, what it is, is... Uh that awesome production quality but um it's got a wee potentiometer right here and it's got inputs and outputs you solder your um components to it yes i said solder because that's what i say just like pop is pop but you solder your components to it and it allows you to um to um vary the the output so uh, in our case, what we're using it for is to make a BEC or battery elimination circuit um, to provide power to our receiver because we're going to need less than the 7.4 volts that our primary power is going to put out. So we're going to make some modifications to our uh, ESC in order to um, facilitate this. Now I'm going to spare you the gory details of watching me solder items and I'm just going to show you um, this harness if you will in different phases so in this phase I've got um, some wires soldered to its output these are specific to my build and I'll explain why I have these little connectors but we're gonna ultimately put a connection on here and that's gonna feed our, our receiver alright so here we have the second phase of our monstrosity forget my wires but um, we have, this is going to be our line in that's going to bring our 7.4 volts in. Now, the modifications I made are I removed, of course, the uh, JST connection at this end, soldered on, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, soldered on um, my connection to my BEC, and of course, I left this, this end as it is. Um, I kind of did a split here. Next, we remove the hot wire from this portion, tucked it in because we do not want um, any power output coming from the receiver in, I mean, from the uh, ESC into the receiver. We want that to be supplied from this end where we've stepped it down to, to six volts. So um, generally this is covered, but I exposed it just so we can see how it's connected. And I have these soldered on here specifically the way that they are to facilitate my build so you you know at this uh, length and I'll show you why but nonetheless there we have it so here's the guy in action okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plug this up and show it working well I've got actually the a complete version and I just put these together and have them laying around just in case. But um, what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead. See, we've got our chip covered there. We've got our connections. Oh, one other thing that I, I forgot to mention before is we've went on ahead and cut off. The ESC in its original form has an on-off switch on it. We've removed that and gone, gone ahead and joined those and then put an on-off switch. Again, this is specific to my build, but you, you will want to put an on-off switch somewhere in the line so that you can power it off. Okay. Um, these LEDs are going to basically just act as power indicators. I've got those on the end, and that was the reason for my connection. And this little guy here is going to go into the... Uh, 
VCC port on our receiver. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to get some components out here and we're going to hook this up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, now we're ready for some action. Uh, we're going to go ahead and connect some of the components up so that you can see what's going on. Now I can turn into a rat's nest pretty quickly. So we're just going to uh, start with some of the basics. Um, you also may know that there's fastener material on the back of some of these components. And that's so that when they're placed in the uh, cab, I can put some components away from others just to minimize um, noise to the FPV feed. So uh, that's the reasoning for that, as well as the length of some of the wires. This is so that they can be placed, um, you know, such as like the on off switch, it's got to go in the hole and you want other components to be in specific locations. So that's the reasoning behind that. But let's go ahead and get this connected. So we're going to start with the uh, what's going to be the power supply to the receiver. We're going to put that onto the VCC port. Uh, we'll go ahead and from here and connect the uh, ESC to channel 2. Once again, we've um, taken the hot wire out of play by removing it, folding it back, and then putting some shrink wrap on that. We're going to put that on to channel 2. We're going to go ahead and put our steering servo onto 1. We're going to put our um, gear shift servo onto channel 3. Over here, this is what would be in the rear of the vehicle on my build. Uh, it would have a camera on it, so we're going to put that 360 servo onto channel 4. Okay, and then we're going to put our driver on channel 7. Okay, let's see here. I believe four, five, six, seven. All right, there we go. Now, um, oh yeah, I guess it would be most helpful to hook the motor up to power. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, power on our transmitter first, and then <laughs> due to the fact that we've added the on/off button, we'll go ahead and power this on. Okay, as you can see, we've we've got um, our power indicator lights are on we can see here on our transmitter um, it's is telling us that we're getting 5.54 volts uh, from the receiver so that's what we've got going and if we wanted to adjust this usually I adjust this obviously prior to um, putting the shrink wrap on it but basically this is where you would adjust that um, that that voltage but it's already been adjusted and we've got that at 5.5 volts all right, so here's our channel one. You can see we got our steering server going well on channel two. It may be hard to see the shaft spinning, but we've got our forward and reverse on channel two. We'll check our servo shifter. That's high gear and then back into low and then reverse. Now you got to take care with these to make sure that um, this is the right lens. Sometimes you can, you know, you, you got to take care so that you can make sure that it's engaging the, the gear shift properly. But we can see that that is working. That's our channel three. Um, our channel four is going to be here. So that's our 360 servo one way and the other way. You can control the speed as well. You can slow that down or speed it up. So you got that going good. And then our channel seven is gonna be. So you can see. Now the other cool thing about these radios is you can do uh, mixing on the channels. So um, I haven't done it yet, but like generally my channel one as the steering servo turns, I usually do a 50% mix to where you get the driver's head to turn as well. I mean, you can do many, many things with these radios uh, with your builds. This is just one dimension of one project. And like you see, I use this for testing. I, if I want to test servos, say if I'm working on a robotics project, I can just plug my servos into a receiver. Um, on a test profile and you know test my servos or whatever so um, 
on a later video, I'm going to explain how the transmitter and the accessory winch uh, ESC go together. It's going to be another deal kind of like this where there's a harness made because we're going to be feeding those two uh, components from one power source. So that'll be the uh, next video that I make. Oh, just another side note. The with regards to um, our friend here, the buck converter, I use this thing everywhere. Here's one uh, in my radio. No more AA batteries. I mean, you can, um, you know, adjust it. I've got, you know, six volts going in and with a JST connector. So uh, it, just, it frees me from the AA's. And um, if anything happens, if I'm out in the field, any one of any battery with a JST connection, I can just plug on here really quick. So these are just the, the kinds of things that I really like about the hobby. I mean, that's I mean, I'm, as you can see, these aren't like high quality videos. I'm just about sharing information. So uh, hopefully this helps. I'm going to have an, the next video uh, detailing how I put the transmitter together. And then eventually I'm going to merge that with all of this so we can bring all of it together and you can see how it works. But hopefully this gives someone some ideas uh, for their build and um, you know, some ideas as far as the versatility of these um, receiver transmitter setups over just the pistol grips. I'm not, not down in those, but these just give you a lot more as far as the channel mixing, more channels and so on and so forth. You're only um, pretty much, if you can find a place within the model to put one of these, you are good to go. Okay, that's all for now. Take it easy. Enjoy the hobby.